Neo-masculinity can be defined as the behaviours, traits and lifestyle choices that modern men have chosen or been forced to adopt in order to biologically survive and prosper. This is a movement based around reasserting and reclaiming what it means to be a man in the face of decades of cultural Marxism and feminism that has scorned and undermined traditionally masculine characteristics and male confidence in general. Men are confused. They're bewildered. They've been lectured that the innate behaviours, feelings and characteristics that defined masculinity for generations are sexist, malevolent and need to be abandoned if men are to have any success with women. The moral relativism and hedonistic nihilism of the 90s and 2000s entrenched this outlook. Neo-masculinity is a backlash against this cultural re-education. It differs to MGTOW, men going their own way, in that it's an uncynical philosophy which rather than abandoning relationships altogether seeks to repair the massive damage that third wave feminism has inflicted on healthy gender relations. So what are the traits of neo-masculinity? This isn't just about acting like a stereotypical alpha male. It's an entire lifestyle optimization program that encompasses many facets. Understanding game and the true nature of women, which we'll cover in a moment. Self-improvement. Instead of checking out and wasting time by playing video games like the Sexodus crowd, neo-masculinists are constantly working to be better disciplined, self-reliant and more individually responsible. This in turn boosts their sexual market value, SMV, and makes it easier for them to attract women. Physical fitness is at the core of this philosophy, notably weightlifting, but not for narcissistic gratification, but again to instill self discipline and confidence. Lifestyle optimization in general, sleep, diet, choosing the right social environments and friends, living ethically and operating at an elevated level of consciousness, building a customized lifestyle that combats the human tendency to be dysfunctional. Politically speaking, it's about rejecting socialism and dependency and embracing entrepreneurship and hard work. Embracing neo-masculinity requires high levels of testosterone, which is why it's interesting to consider the fact that, for whatever reason, levels of testosterone in men have been dropping at a rate of 1% per year since the late 80s. This could be one explanation for the rise of metrosexuals and beta men. In the meantime though, how is the rise of neo-masculinity going to affect dating and mating? In the past, to a large extent, all men had to do to attract women was to share resources, as a result of a woman's basic survival needs now being met without the need for a man, thanks in part to the growth of the welfare state, this no longer works. And that's part of the reason why statistically, women are getting married at a later and later age. Feminists have made housewife a dirty word. Despite it being equally as tough and important as pursuing a career, women have been taught that devoting their earlier years to bringing up children makes them a failure. Thanks to the evisceration of traditional gender roles, women in their 20s are now behaving more like men sleeping around with bad boys and becoming obsessed with hypergamy, constantly on the lookout for a better option instead of committing to a quote, nice guy. Which is why this new breed of neo-masculine men have to deploy all kinds of manipulative mind games and techniques as a way of reorienting women back towards embracing the natural, attractive male traits that feminism has brainwashed them into thinking are brutish, arcane, and misogynistic. This is why game and pickup artists in general are more popular than they've ever been before. Men are having to resort to taxing and sophisticated methods to be successful with women, because many Western females have beauty expectations way beyond their own level of attractiveness and place less value in basic upfront honesty, trust, hard work, 
and the provision of resources. Women are wearing the trousers in terms of the dating game throughout their 20s. But once they hit 30, the roles are rapidly reversed. Women have been re-educated through third wave feminism and fluid dating to believe that they can spend their 20s, which represents the peak of their sexual market value, SMV, bed hopping instead of finding and committing to a long-term partner. This works for a while, but as soon as they hit 30, a woman's SMV, i.e. her biological value to men, begins to plummet, and she finds it harder to attract and keep a high-value man. This is where we see the classic cat lady stereotype come in. In other words, women going their own way, satiating their unsatisfied biological urge for children by acquiring pets and treating them as babies. Neo-masculinists are aware of the fact that men don't share this problem because their sexual market value, if anything, increases after they hit 30 because they're acquiring more confidence, influence, and resources, all of which are the most innately attractive traits for young women, no matter what feminists claim. To be neo-masculine is to understand these fundamental truths. For men, the most attractive traits in a woman are youth, beauty, and fertility. No amount of feminist brainwashing about the beauty industry being an artificial construct of the evil patriarchy can change this basic biological fact. For women, the most attractive traits in men are social value, influence, and resources. This combination worked well for thousands of years, and humanity prospered. But thanks to feminism and cultural Marxism, gender relations are in disarray, and both sexes are in a constant state of confusion. In many ways, the MGTOW movement, men going their own way, and the sexodus, men checking out of dating and relationships altogether, is the bastard child of third wave feminism. The two feed off of each other. In this environment, only men who transcend the sexodus and adopt neo-masculinity can have much hope of enjoying relationships with women who don't end up destroying their confidence and then driving them back to the sexodus. In many ways, gender relations would be much healthier if men didn't need to adopt neo-masculinity in the first place to attract women. But thanks to the attack on traditional gender roles and the feminist re-education of Western women, loyalty, honesty, and hard work are no longer seen as fulfilling enough traits for modern women until they begin to wise up when they hit 30 to 35, by which time it's too late. This is why women who buy into third wave feminism and avoid the decision to commit to a high value man until they hit their 30s are going to get rejected by high value neo-masculine men to a greater and greater degree. Neo-masculine men, who in the long term will make far better relationship partners for women in comparison to metrosexual men, are just as rare as neo-feminine females, and their standards are extremely high. So whereas they may date lots of women, they will refuse to commit to a female who is still under the trance of cultural Marxism and therefore more likely to cheat on them. Metrosexual men, on the other hand, are less likely to be bothered by this because they have little self-respect and are willing to be treated like crap. Long term, this benefits neither gender. So in summary, neo-masculinity is the backlash against third wave feminism and the environment and conditions that has created for dating and mating. It's about rejecting the attack on traditional masculinity and reasserting the ethical foundation and self-respect of what it means to be a man. Check out the information linked below for more insights on neo-masculinity. Shout out to Rouge V and Quintus Curtius. Also check out my other videos on feminism. Subscribe to the channel. I'm Paul Joseph Watson for InfoWars.com.